beautiful. How are you today? It is great to see each and every one of you here as we conquer day four of the incoming paper challenge. So this is the challenge where we are working on our action files and we are getting it all contained as soon as it comes into our homes, which is so exciting. Now, as you hop in, I would love to hear who is here, where you're joining me from. Um, just feel free, enter it in the comments and that way I can see exactly who you are, where you're from. We're still waiting for some people to hop on, I know, but I wanna make this short and sweet, get right to the meat of it for you. So today is day four of the Incoming Paper Challenge. If you don't already know me, I'm Susanna Kay. I think by now, day four, you probably already do. But we have been building this week our action file. Now our action file is that file that handles every single incoming paper in our homes. So let's go over, we already went over the supplies to get for your action file and how to build it and some of those tricks. Today we're going to go over how to use this action file. And I see two Kathys have already joined me, Kathy K and Kathy V, welcome, and Jean is here. So as you hop on, definitely tell me hello. And yeah, so like I mentioned, when papers come into your home, the action file can handle every single one of them. And this is how it works. Because these are actions and not paper types, then just about every single paper can fit into one of these actions. And we want broad categories. That's why we did very simple actions, 10 choices or fewer, and you can put uh, whatever actions make sense to you. Basically, the way to decide your actions is if it can start with the word to, T-O, then it's probably a good choice. So the main actions that I always set up as a basis to start with before adjusting anything, try these out, are to do, to enter, to read, to scan, and to file. Now, once you've got these set up, you can adjust these based on what you need for your life. And we're talking about making some of those adjustments in over in the Facebook group and in the emails. So I'll share some of the alternatives such as to review or pending, you know, to wait on, things like that, waiting for a reply. There are definitely ways to adapt this. But with these basic folders, I'll go over the concept of what happens when a paper comes into your life and it goes into the file because it does not necessarily go into one file folder and stay there. It can bounce around between the different file folders. So possibly say you get uh, your electric bill. Now, maybe your next step for your electric bill is you have to pay it. Maybe you still manually pay it or maybe you just check that the auto payment goes through. So the first thing you can do with it, that would be a to-do. So maybe you put it in the to-do folder. Well, once you've completed that action and you've actually done it, well, maybe then you want to enter that information somewhere else. So maybe that goes into to enter after that. Or possibly you want to scan it or just file it and it can go into the to file folder. So papers can bounce around. It's always the next action that we care about. We don't care about future actions. What is the very next step that needs to happen with that paper? So with the utility bill, the next step that has to happen is to do, we need to pay it. And it can stay in the to-do folder until, we'll talk about maintaining this and not forgetting your to-dos tomorrow, but it'll stay in the to-do folder until you've done it. And then it can hop to other folders. And the only way out of your action file is either to file, and it actually gets filed, or to the shredder, recycle bin, some way of disposing it. So that's how papers go into the different file folders. Now, an overview of some of the file folders and some of the papers and that process. So to do, for example, this could be things like bills to pay, or if you have an RSVP for a party or something, what you can do, enter that really quickly in your calendar. I try not to put anything in my action file that has a calendar event attached without actually entering it in my calendar first. That's the only thing that I worry about. But you can put that in there so that you remembered RSVP. You could do receipts if you have any possible returns. So if you bought some things, you wanna make sure that you don't need the receipt to return it. Those receipts can go in here until that return period has passed. And if you need to return it, you'll know where the receipt is. 
If not, then that receipt can go away once that return period is done or you've decided to keep the item. So bank statements can go in here if you just need to review them and make sure that you've balanced your accounts. Reminders, you can even handwrite your own notes and put them in any one of these folders. So for example, in the to enter folder, the to enter folder is great for things like passwords. If you create a new password and you wanted to enter it in whatever password storage, either app or book that you have, you can even handwrite the note with the password, stick it right in your to enter file. And then whenever you're ready to sit down and enter all of the things from the enter to enter file or all of one type of thing, then that's when it can come back out. So business cards are great to go into enter or if there's anything with information on it and all that you need is the information, not the paper itself. So I often want to enter maybe if I have a new expense, that's a new recurring expense and I want to make sure to enter that in my Spark Life binder as far as what the auto drafts are, then that might go in my to enter. Anything that you would wanna put in something like your Spark Life binder or important papers binder, address book, phone book, write it anywhere else. Recipes, if you create recipe cards, to enter is a great spot. Now after that is to read. So to read, a lot of times things will come in and we're not even sure if we have something that we need to do with them or not, or we just want to research it and read through it. To read is great for that. It can hold things like magazines. You could put the whole magazine in there if you want to. And then when the new issue comes in, the old issue goes out, but you'll know right where to find it and you'll remember to read it. Insurance policies, if you wanna review the insurance policy before you file it, this is a great place to put it. Stick it in to read and when you have the chance to sit and read through things, then you can read it. Maybe you're researching something for saving on car insurance. So you put in that flyer to read more about the offer that you just got in the mail. You wanna read through it to see if it's something you even want to do. So articles, research information, you can even tear articles out of magazines or other places and put just the torn out article right in there. And the nice thing is with to read, if you ever have to go anywhere where you'll be waiting around for a while, like a doctor's office or picking up the kids in the school line, you can grab the whole to read folder and take it with you. And then when you come home, if there's anything that after reading it, you want to enter or do or file, it can move around to that next folder. To scan, if you want to scan your documents, then to scan's a great folder. So that way you don't have to worry about scanning them right then. You can just stick them into scan. And just like the to file folder, what I say with both of these is when it gets full, it gets done. So when it gets full, it gets filed. When it gets full, it gets scanned. Just it's safe until you get to the point where you have time to file it or scan it. And until that point, you will know if it's not in the file cabinet, it's in your to file folder or it's in your to scan folder. So it's not hard to find these papers in the meantime. You don't have to file these things every single day. You don't have to constantly be working on each one of these folders. So things will bounce around from place to place. The nice thing is also when you have something like a to file folder or a to scan folder, when we think about things that we wanna keep, we just toss them right in there. But this gives you a second review before it hits that file cabinet. So before you file it, you're gonna look at it again. And half the time I will tell you, you will probably decide you don't actually need it because in that first moment of indecision, you threw it into file. But when you see it again, it really gives you that second glance to see, is this really something that I want to file? So that helps keep your filing system from getting overfilled as well with that second review before it hits your filing system. So that's how that works. They bounce around from folder to folder. And the only folder that you need to set an actual either calendar event or a habit or some reminder is the to do folder because this is the only one where if something is not done in time, it could cause a problem. To enter, to scan, to read, anything in there, if you've not already, if you uh, don't check it on a regular basis, that's okay. There's nothing that important that's probably in there and you know right where to find it if you need it, but they're not gonna be as urgent. So when you get around to it, that's a great time to do it or when it gets full. A lot of times I say when it gets full is when you do it. But the to-do folder, this one is the scariest one. We'll talk about some of the maintenance tricks and the tricks about how to make sure that you don't forget anything in your to-do folder. 
because out of sight, out of mind is a real thing and it is terrifying. So tomorrow we'll go more in depth about that. But to start off with, sometimes what I do recommend is you can grab a binder clip if you want to, and you could always clip the papers that are to do if you wanted to right onto the front of your action file. So for example, that utility bill, if you're afraid of having a to-do folder where you can't see it, then you can always, let me pull that out. You can always take your to-dos and just clip them to the front of your action file. So that way they're still in sight and you don't forget that they're there until you either get used to using the to-do folder or maybe the to-do folder. If you're an out of sight, out of minder, maybe that's just not for you and that's absolutely okay too. So it's fine to clip it to the front. It's fine to have just your to-do pile next to your action file. Pick a little inbox tray to put that in there or a little basket to put just your to-dos in there. Make sure that only the to-dos go in there though. We don't want this to build up. But hopefully that gave you a really good overview of how to use your action file, how things can move around in it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I see so many of you have hopped on and said hello. Uh, Cindy and let's see, Rope and Jean and Deborah, Sue, Darlene, Betty, Ter, is it Ter? Ter? That's a neat name. Welcome. And a couple of people who I can't see the names, it just says Facebook user, but I'm so glad that you're here. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Uh, I will keep checking the comments throughout the week. And then also remember, tomorrow we will go more in depth into some of the customization and maintenance that we will do with our action file. So some additional folders that you can use, some maintenance tricks and tricks to not forget those to-do folder items. We'll talk about those tomorrow. And then I will hop on live again on Saturday for all of you who are just finishing up or getting all caught up or working on your action files over the weekend, Saturday morning at 11 o'clock Eastern, then I will be live again for a longer period of time if we need it. As long as there are questions, I will be here answering them. And also I wanted to just give you a heads up. If you have trouble with more than just your incoming papers, Maybe you need help with paper piles and sorting, or you've got a full file cabinet, any of that, then the Paper Path membership is about to close enrollment until later this year. So make sure if you do want step-by-step bite-sized guided help through all of your papers, including helping make all of those paper decisions, we have a full database that we're building up of questions on how long to keep specific papers then the paper path is a great thing to join right now before the prices go up. So Sunday, the prices are going to go up and then enrollment closes next week. And then when it reopens, prices will be significantly higher because we're making some big changes in the structure of the paper path. So I'm really excited about some of the things that are coming to the paper path. Um, I just entered in the comments the paper path link but you see it also on your screen. Right now it's only $14 a month. And if you join at the $14 a month rate, then as long as you're a member, you keep that rate no matter what happens with the price. So hopefully I can see you in the paper path with hundreds of other pathfinders. I've heard so many amazing stories of people's successes in the paper path. If you're a pathfinder on with me right now, then let me know in the comments. Um, I know a number of you have just sent me the most amazing success stories. I'll post some of them in the group too. But hop over to that link and check out the paper path before the price goes up and before enrollment closes because it will never be the same structure again and it will never be the same price again. And if you join now, then you get in on all of the changes for this low price. And it helps you one step at a time through all of the papers, including sorting papers, which that's one where I hear so many success stories of people with an entire room full of papers to sort and the paper path and the onion method that I teach has helped so many people. I shared a video of how I helped one woman named Lynn store uh, or Lee store uh, sort through an entire storage unit of papers with the onion method and we were able to do it. So it's pretty amazing. And Darlene says, yes, PPM, that's short for paper path membership. Yes, Darlene is a superstar there. I love it. 
Um, Bev asks, what was the slip of paper on the front of one of your folders? It looked like a sheet detailing what to put in the file. Actually, that was uh, earlier. I was just showing that if you wanted to, if you were afraid of to-do items, getting lost inside of your to-do folder and not seeing them, you can always just clip it. This was my example of a to-do item. Clip it to the front of your file if you're afraid of out of sight, out of mind. So hopefully that one um, makes sense. And feel free, rewind and uh, look over what I just showed about that too. Uh, Tara says, could making the to-do folder a different color, maybe red, make it more obvious? Absolutely. I love to organize with color. I am very big into color coding so that I can quickly find what I need. And I love using like a red or a lot of times I do like a bright green because red is like a little scary. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, red means something bad. So sometimes I'll do a bright green or some bright colorful, like fun pattern for my to-do folder so it stands out and so I don't forget it. I also add reminders onto the reminder app on my phone <laughs> because otherwise I will totally forget. Um, yep, yeah, storage units full of boxes with papers. I hear that all the time and I see so many people also hopping on. Oh, Beth says, nope, that wasn't it. It was actually on the front of the file folder itself. Oh, yes, within the paper path, the first step of the path, we go through the action file as well. So there's probably one of them that has, within the paper path, I have these little cheat sheets as one of the freebies for the action file that you can print out and tape onto the front or the inside of your action file pages. And that's just one of the bonuses that I give to paper path members. I have a ton of worksheets and checklists and various types of cheat sheets for paper path members throughout the path. So yeah, I forgot all about that being on there, but yeah, Pathfinders, that's what you get. And if you've not noticed it in your action file section, I'm pretty sure you have, cause I emailed it, but if not, there you go. Kathy says, how often do you look into the to-do file? For me, I like to look into it once a week and then I just kind of put it in order of what needs to be done and I only pull out and do the things that need to be done right then and I can leave the rest until later. So just looking in the to-do file does not mean you have to do it right then, it just means that you're making sure that you know when the things in there are due. So it does not have to be a scary folder. And Bev, you're so welcome, absolutely. So, but as far as Kathy, your question about the to-do file, it depends on when your to-do items are normally due, how often you want to check it, everybody's a little bit different. But I usually recommend at least eyeballing it once a week. You don't have to do everything once a week, just look into it once a week and see what needs to be done so you don't possibly miss anything. But awesome, you guys are absolutely amazing. I love all that you're sharing over in the Facebook group. Please share photos of the action file that you've built over in the Facebook group. You're all so creative and I love all of the different styles that everybody has for their action files. So post a photo right after you're done here. Check out the paper path if you wanted to get in at that $14 rate because like I said, it's going up, enrollment's closing, and when it reopens, it's going to be a much higher rate because I'm restructuring a number of things within it and it's going to be amazing. But all the hundreds of people who are on the lower monthly charge will stay on that monthly charge. They won't be, uh, when it reopens, it'll probably be closer to the 50 or $100 rate. So hop in now while you can and learn how to get through absolutely every single paper in your home from sorting them and incoming papers. We go through exactly how to set up your file cabinet and walk you through setting up a file cabinet and self-purging files and monthly file system and short-term files and uh, important paper binders. And we are we have a whole tax section and organizing your papers for taxes and during tax time. And there are other specialty paper sections coming up as well. So, so much in there that I would love to have you join me for. If you need anything else, please let me know. Um, one last question, Reese says, how often do you review the whole file? You know, I don't actually have a time where I sit down and review the whole file. So when the to file and to scan get full, or when I happen to have time, that's when I grab them and I file them or scan them. And I don't worry about it until then. The to enter, whenever I have time and I feel like sitting on the couch and wanting TV and entering, watching TV and entering things in, that's when I'll usually go through that. Um, but to read, I grab it if I have to wait in the car line to pick up my uh, stepdaughter, who's amazing, my wonderful girl. If I have to sit in line waiting for her, then I'll grab the to read folder and I'll take it with me and read through things then. There's not specifically a time 
that I go through the whole thing, but everybody's different. If you wanted to, you could decide once a month, this is when you go through the whole file. Henri says that she joined the paper path yesterday. Yay, woo, woo, welcome. I'm so excited to have you. If you need anything at all, I am absolutely here for you. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you, Darlene. She says, yes, get to know your style and get motivation and have live sessions. Susanna K is so relatable to me. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, in the paper path, we do the live group hikes, which are accountability sessions live on video where we work side by side with each other and I share tips and answer questions. And we do those often and those are just for pathfinders. So uh, Reese, I hope you can join me for the next paper, the next group hike. It'll be listed in your paper path when it's coming up. Thank you so much. Um, and Darlene, yes, you and Reese are now pathfinders together. Yay. Well, I love you all so much. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Post those photos of the action file and I will see you all very, very soon. I love you so much and you've got this. I know it. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <sighs>